Welcome to the Baseball Card Illustrated channel, where we talk about our national pastime, which is illustrated with baseball cards. And this is Through the Mail Thursday, where we take cards we pull of our cardboard heroes on the big show and send them out to our favorite baseball players hoping to get them back with an autograph. I'm Bronco, the PSA 11, and I'm pleased to announce that Kevin, the Diamond King, and I got envelopes back from five Count them five athletes in the past week. Knuckleballer Charlie Huff posted 216 wins in his career, a total that ties for 86th on the all-time list and matches the legendary Wilbur Cooper as well as a guy named Kurt Schilling. Huff learned to throw the knuckleball in 1970 after three mostly unsuccessful seasons in the minors. He would make his big league debut later that year. Mostly remembered as a starting pitcher, he actually made just one start in his first nine seasons in the majors and was not a rotation fixture until 1982. He spent 11 years with Texas and won 139 games for the Rangers. He would also pitch for the Chicago White Sox and Florida Marlins during a career that saw him go in even 216 and 216 with 61 saves. Huff actually started the first game in the history of the Florida Marlins and was the winning pitcher in that game. Ironically, he faced the Dodgers in his return to the National League well over a decade after he pitched primarily out of the bullpen for the L.A. franchise. He tossed six innings to outduel Oral Hershiser 6-3. A big thank you goes out to Dennis Rasmussen for subscribing to Baseball Card Illustrated, which he was awesome enough to mention in this response. Not only is he a great human being for clicking that subscribe button, just like all of you, he was also a really good pitcher. The left-hander won 91 games in a 12-year big league career that included stints with San Diego, the New York Yankees, Cincinnati, the Chicago Cubs, and Kansas City. Perhaps the best stretch of his time in the show came with the Padres in 1988. He was traded to San Diego from the Reds and went 14-4 with a 2.55 earned run average over 20 starts, which included six complete games. These days, according to Wikipedia, Rasmussen operates the family business, the Charlevoix Dairy Grill, located in a town I clearly cannot pronounce in Michigan. Their Facebook page suggests they closed for the season in September, which makes sense due to a Midwest climate that contains three hours of summer weather each year. However, internet reviews of the place are great. So if you're ever in the northern part of the Lower Peninsula, Stop by the Dairy Grill for a frozen treat and a lesson in how to pronounce the name of the town you've stumbled upon. The following announcement has been paid for by the Hoops Wednesday Order. Hey, yo. Those jabronis at Baseball Card Illustrated have kept Hoops Wednesday off their channel for a while. So, man, we're not asking. We're taking Here's a 1990-91 NBA Hoops autograph you'll enjoy. Josip Peruzovic, better known as Nikolai Volkov, was a Croatian-American wrestler who originated from Yugoslavia. He is probably best known for pairing up with the Iron Sheik. Under the tutelage of manager Classy Freddy Blassie, the duo won the tag team titles from the U.S. Express at the very first WrestleMania. Volkov is remembered for singing the Soviet National Anthem prior to his matches, and he also feuded with WWF champions Bruno Sammartino and Hulk Hogan in singles competition. Later on, he would team up with Boris Zukov to form the Bolsheviks. Wait, this is Alexander Volkov, who is commonly known as Sasha Volkov. He was the second player from the Soviet Union selected in the NBA draft, taken by the Atlanta Hawks in the sixth round of the 1986 draft. He would play 149 career games in the association, averaging 6.8 points and 2.6 rebounds per game. He would ultimately play professionally for 20 years, being selected as the most valuable player in 1989 in the USSR. After his hoops career, he was elected to the Ukrainian parliament. The preceding announcement was paid for by the Hoops Wednesday order. It's been an interesting run for Ruben Amaro Jr., who played eight big league seasons, 
has filled a wide variety of other roles within the game, and even has some acting credits on his resume. The switch-hitting outfielder collected 218 hits in the majors, including 16 home runs, while playing for California, Philadelphia, and Cleveland. As impressive as his accomplishments on the diamond, what he has done in other roles is also noteworthy. The son of a former major league player, Amaro first wore an authentic jersey as a bat boy for the Phillies from 1980 to 1983. Following his playing career, he immediately moved into a front office position with the Phillies as an assistant general manager. He was promoted to GM in late 2008 and guided the defending World Series champions back to the Fall Classic in his first year in his new job. Philly would go on to claim the NL East titles in 2010 and 2011. Known for building starting pitching rotations with star power, including the Fantastic Four, Amaro also earned a reputation for paying star money to players on the downside of their careers, such as the long-term extension for Ryan Howard. After leaving Philadelphia, Amaro served as a first base coach for Boston and the New York Mets, was a special assistant to the GM with the Mets, and, most recently, spent the 2020 season working as a pre- and post-game analyst for Phillies TV broadcasts. Interestingly enough, Amaro is portrayed as a teenager on one of my favorite shows, The Goldbergs, because he attended the same high school as show producer Adam F. Goldberg. Amaro has actually acted in two episodes on the series, playing the role of his father. Joe Skalski was a right-handed pitcher who appeared in two games for the Cleveland Indians. While his major league career was a bit on the short side, he is a member of the St. Xavier Athletic Hall of Fame, inducted in 2016. He helped the Cougars win the 1985 Chicagoland Collegiate Athletic Conference regular season title, and the team took second in the league in both 1984 and 1986. He ranks third in program history for strikeouts per nine innings, fifth in earned run average, and he set a single season record with 127 strikeouts in 1986. Not only did Skalski lead the New York Penn League in strikeouts with 130 in 1986 after a stellar season in college, he even responded to our notes saying he will check out the channel. Those things aren't necessarily related, but if you're out there, Joe, thanks for watching and for signing this card. Joe Skalski, everybody. Thank you for watching this edition of Through the Mail Thursday, and to our newest subscriber and the four other awesome athletes who signed a card for us. For Charlie Huff, Dennis Rasmussen, Alexander Volkoff, and the Iron Sheik, Ruben Amaro Jr., playing Ruben Amaro Sr., and Joe Skalski, and on behalf of Kevin the Diamond King and our graphics guru Dylan, this is the longest sentence ever. Just making sure you're still with me. I'm Bronco, the PSA 11. So long, everybody. You've been watching the Baseball Card Illustrated channel.